Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for crypto news and interviews. Lots of big news today, my friends. Grayscale is going after the SEC, citing specific rules and regulations that the SEC appears to not have followed with approving a Bitcoin spot ETF. This is very interesting. We're seeing a lot of folks going on the offensive against the SEC. And speaking of the SEC, we have the Grinch and we have Scrooge are meeting together tomorrow. Want to guess who those two are? Jay Clayton and Gary Genser. Oh my gosh, meeting uh, of the dark side here. <laughs> They're going to be doing a fireside chat. I want to give you the details, what people are saying. Also, Chris Giancarlo, who's uh, obviously pro crypto, pro XRP, not being a security, he's going to be there too. So tomorrow is going to be very interesting, guys. I want to share the news there. We also have some massive news around Algorand. $500 million coming into the Algorand ecosystem. I'm so bullish on Algo. I want to give you that news. It's pretty big. Also, uh, we have a ton of other crypto and Bitcoin adoption news that I want to break down for you guys. Before we get to it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. Guys, this video is brought to you by OKCoin Crypto Exchange, where you can buy, sell, and trade your favorite cryptocurrencies and you don't have to pay high fees. OKCoin charges low fees. You can also stake your crypto and keep 100% of the rewards. There are no fees charged for staking. Many exchanges charge fees, guys, but with OKCoin, Stake it and get everything. You keep 100% of the rewards. Now, OKCoin is also running a massive giveaway for the holidays coming up called 12 Days of Crypto, giving away over $50,000 worth of crypto. So go check it out. It is You don't have to pay anything. You just got to go play a game and you can win it, guys. It's free crypto. You can get a couple thousand dollars in Bitcoin. Why not? Uh, so be sure to check it out. I'll put a link to this giveaway and also sign up with OKCoin, guys. All right, let's look at the market here. Not much happening because once again, the market follows Bitcoin's move, all coins move with Bitcoin. And Bitcoin did have some level of a pullback today where on the weekly chart, you'll see here that a uh, green candle got a bit smaller. It, at one point throughout the day, it was in red. So as I said in yesterday's video, the weak green candle that we saw forming it may turn red and this may be a red week, but I'm hoping it's a green week and we're building the support level where Bitcoin can bounce and move upwards, right? I've been sharing this respective market cycle uh, drawn on, on, on the weekly chart for you guys for months now, and it's playing out that way. And I think new all-time highs are coming. We'll see what happens in December. I'm hoping it plays out in December and Bitcoin heads to six figures. That will be awesome. It may or may not. And then there's some who think there's a lengthening cycle theory that the, it, this could spill over into Q1 and Bitcoin hits its blow off top in Q1. We will just have to wait and see. And patience is the key here. Now, Crypto Burb uh, doing great technical analysis for Bitcoin tweeted the following chart today saying Bitcoin oversold 3D momentum brings or huge rallies. So we're seeing Bitcoin at the oversold uh, area. And historically, when that happens, you can then see a bounce upwards and then uh, a, a rally following that. So a lot of the respective metrics and signals and indicators are aligning to what we are expecting to see. Um, and from a macro level, you know, as we talked about, guys, uh, if things play out like they have in 2013 and 2017, we could see Bitcoin over $100,000 easily potentially to $200,000. Now, is that highly probable? No. And is that guaranteed? Of course not. But fingers crossed that it gets there because even if you don't hold Bitcoin, I hold Bitcoin, so I wanted to get there, but I also have altcoins. As I've stated many times, the higher Bitcoin's price goes, the more capital will flow into the altcoins. Once Bitcoin gets to that over, uh, overbought scenario, and then it will correct and go into its bear market phase. And then all coins will pump as they have historically. We'll see an alt season, the capital will flow downwards into the all coins. So I hope you guys get that. I've shared a, 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 you know, different charts over the, the years um, showing that how the liquidity, the, the capital flows, right? So that's what we can potentially uh, expect. And once again, a lot of models looking, 
looking good here. We'll see what happens though, because as I said, none of this is guaranteed. All right, guys, look at this news. I find this absolutely bullish. Grayscale argues the SEC's Bitcoin ETF treatment could violate the APA. You don't say. So the SEC rejected Banex's proposal for a spot Bitcoin ETF earlier this month. Grayscale will uh, still has an application before the agency to convert its GBTC product to an ETF. Grayscale sent a letter to the SEC claiming the agency's willingness to approve a futures-based product, but not a spot product, is arbitrary. Is arbitrary and capricious. <laughs> and could constitute a violation of the Administrative Procedure Act, APA. Wow, let that sink in here for a couple of seconds. So, Rayscale, the largest crypto fund in the, in the uh, industry, right? Uh, they have billions, I think over 60 billions of assets under management. Lots of power, lots of money. Obviously, Grayscale is owned by Digital Currency Group, which owns Foundry, which owns Coindesk. They are a, a massive uh, a whale, if you want to call them that, in the crypto market, guys. And once again, a lot of money, a lot of influence. So if they're making this claim and they're pushing back, I like this. This is good because the SEC needs to feel pressure. As I've said many times with the Ripple lawsuit, keep calling, keep tweeting, keep emailing, keep making videos, um, because the SEC is supposed to represent us, the retail investors. Clearly, they're not, right? Clearly, Gensler is kissing the bankster's asses. Clearly, he is a puppet. And him, uh, you know, before his predecessor, Jay Clayton, the same thing. Um, and we know with the futures ETF approval, he's allowing that because he knows his banks, bankster friends will manipulate the hell out of the market using the futures, which is settled with it, not physical Bitcoin, right? It's settled with paper contracts. So, this, this is what they've used to manipulate gold and silver. You, if you go up and re, go read your history on what JP Morgan did and how much fines they got and so forth. So let me uh, give you some more details here. Um, in light of these events, once again, Grayscale uh, rejecting the Van Eck, uh, they sent uh, the Van Eck ETF a, a spot proposal. Grayscale sent a letter to the agency Monday night arguing that the SEC's repeated rejections could violate the Administrative Procedure Act. The APA governs the decision-making process of federal agencies. Guys, I hope this sticks. This would be so good. Imagine we get a spot ETF. Imagine it pu just puts the SEC in just a bad spot, more bad PR for them. And we've heard rumblings from uh, the likes of investigative journalist Charles Gasparino that Gensler wants the treasury job and he has his people doing things that will make him look good versus actually doing the duties of the SEC and they're, they're overworked. So when if, if I hope some other companies, maybe Van Eck and the others, join Grayscale in this, guys. This is not getting the coverage it should today. Right, and especially those of us who hold XRP, even Terra Luna, hell, even Coinbase, getting their lending block. I hope more companies come in and, and put pressure on the SEC. So, um, Grayscale claims the agency's decisions have been arbitrary and capricious since the commission has approved futures-based Bitcoin ETFs, but not spot-based offerings. Since the early rumblings of Bitcoin futures ETF approvals, Grayscale has been pointing out the inconsistencies in the willingness to approve a futures-based product, but not one that holds the underlying. Here's a quote. Bitcoin futures ETPs registered under the 1940 Act and spot Bitcoin ETPs that are not required or eligible to be so registered are the uh, same in all relevant respects. But based on the analysis in the November 12, 2021 disapproval order, the commission is treating them differently, the letter said. Vanex product was proposed under the Securities Act of 1933, while the approved futures product have the additional oversight of the Investment Company Act of 1940. SEC Chair Gary Genser has previously stated his interest in approving products under the 40 a 1940 Act due to its heightened protections. While the 33 Act is focused on disclosures, the 40, 1940 Act empowers regulators to check up on issuers and set consumers uh, protection standards that insurers must meet. 
the SEC has pointed to different uh, to the difference in the registrations as the reason for the different treatment between futures and spot based products. But Grayscale argues this is a departure from the market manipulation concerns the SEC has continuously cited in its rejection orders. So as I stated, futures lends itself to more manipulation. Genser is going to say, oh, no, no, no. But if they are actually holding the physical Bitcoin, there's less likely of, of, of manipulation. And once again, go back to what JP Morgan and others have done to gold and silver using ETFs, guys. So um, Genser, once again, bullshitting. And uh, it, once again, I, I hope I hope that this uh, puts some pressure once again, because Grayscale is no joke. Digital currency group is no joke. They have a lot of asset on, assets under management, got a lot of capital, a lot of uh, different moving parts in their business, mining, Bitcoin, media, all kinds of things. So this is good, guys. This is bullish. And I'm hoping, um, you know, th th this, this pressure, it mounts on the SEC and Genser and other folks jump in. Um, quick update here on Grayscale before we talk about Genser and, and Jay Clayton. Grayscale is, uh, launches uh, or has launched a new dedicated trust to Solana. So if you're holding Solana, congratulations. As I've said before, I personally don't have any. Um, it's not something that I got into. Uh, look, you can get to every coin. But if you have it and you're making money, congratulations, guys, because it's performing amazing. And I think it will perform even uh, amazing uh, in the future because we've seen a lot of coins that got added to Grayscale because a lot of capital comes in, we see these coins usually pump and they, they do well because it's obviously Grayscale, they, they uh, essentially cater to institutional investors. So you're gonna see uh, a lot of capital come into that trust. All right, look at this guys. Uh, we got the Grinch and Scrooge meeting tomorrow. So Charles Gasparino, investigative journalist at Fox Business. My sources tell me that a prominent member of the XRP community will be showing up to Gary Genser and Jake Clayton fireside chat tomorrow. Should be interesting. Um, Eleanor Tourette, who works with Charles, Charles Gasparino at Fox, says, looking forward to attending the DACOM um, and the DACOM summit, excuse me, tomorrow featuring Gary Genser, Christian Carlo, and Jake Clayton. I have so many questions. So <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I don't know if they're Giancarlo is going to be sitting in on that fireside chat or if he's just going to be there. We will have to see. Remember, Jay, uh, Jay Clayton filed the lawsuit against Ripple. Um, Genser is continuing it. And Giancarlo in 2020 came out and said XRP is not a security. And I've interviewed him a couple of times. Um, if you haven't seen those interview, I'll, uh, interviews, I'll put them in the, uh, the links in the description. So we'll see what happens tomorrow and what the Grinch <laughs> Gary gets her and what Scrooge Jay Clayton have to say uh you know I did a video yesterday talking about Genser could ruin Christmas we'll see what happens crypto Christmas at least um uh, because there's rumblings uh, about they're going to do some more enforcement actions but let's hope not right like I said yesterday that, that, that's not guaranteed to happen and I'm hoping it doesn't happen but I want to let you guys know what could potentially happen um so tomorrow I'll be watching this closely we'll see what these two have to say uh, they should be ashamed of, them, of themselves. They don't represent investors, uh, retail investors. It's all a facade. We know they're controlled by the banking cartel. Um, Warren Davidson, great congressman who's been uh, putting together a lot of great crypto regulations. You know, he, he retweeted Charles Gasparino's investigative reporting about the Ripple SEC lawsuit. And he highlighted his bill, the Token Taxonomy Act, could fix this. He said... This could be resolved and prevented by passing my bi bipartisan token taxonomy act so that investors, innovators, and regulators have a bright line standard defining what is and what is not a security. The token taxonomy act should be noticed for the upcoming December 8 F FSC hearing. So I remember I told you guys the crypto CEOs are meeting with Congress come December 7th. So we can only pray that Congress passes something like this and they're like, hey, we're gonna green like this. And man, we can only hope, right? And, and, and it really puts Genser and the SEC in their place. Um, so let's see what happens. You know, I'm always hopeful, but we sometimes our government doesn't work the way we want it to, right? Congress. So we will see what happens. All right, let's move ahead. 
JP Morgan is hosting a private crypto forum. <laughs> I know Jamie Dimon is grinding his teeth right now. He's, he's mad as a hornet right now <laughs> because we know he doesn't like Bitcoin. But as I've stated many times, they have to capitulate because their clients will pretty much leave them and go to the next bank or the next uh, crypto fund or hedge fund to invest. And they will be idiots not to uh, provide investing services around crypto. And we know they started a Bitcoin wealth fund and JP Morgan, excuse me, Jamie Dimon still continues to spread FUD about Bitcoin, right? But hey, he, he doesn't have to like it in his heart of hearts. I don't think he, he likes it at all. But if he wants to keep making money, because disruption is happening, so you better get on board or you will go out of business. Um, look at this, guys. Look at this. Borderless Capital launches $500 million Algorand-focused fund. The fund will look to invest in a range of DeFi and NFT projects built on the Algorand blockchain network. You, you, those of you who are subscribed to the channel, I've been talking about Algorand for a while, right? In fact, uh, just to give you a heads up, and this, this is not because Algorand is going to sponsor this channel. They will become the official sponsor of this channel. I've been holding Algorand and Algo tokens for a long time. I, I put more of my money into it. Um, over the past three to uh, two to three months. And that is because I saw what Michael Arrington did and Arrington put $100 million to build the Algorand ecosystem. Anthony Scaramucci's Skybridge Capital also put $100 million. Now we have Borderless putting $500 million. See what's happening here? They're betting big on Algorand. And one of the things that made me very bullish on Algorand was the fact that they are working with central banks and countries around the world to have them build their CBDCs on the Algorand blockchain. I mean, my goodness, right? That's one of the largest use cases out there. Not to mention, if you're holding Algorand, you, you earn, um, obviously, the rewards. And, and that's the great thing. You, even if you just buy and you're holding, you're earning at the same time. So there's a lot of pros versus cons here for Algorand. And obviously this is not financial or investment advice. So the company announced on Tuesday that the fund will invest in digital assets, powering the next generation of decentralized applications on top of the Algorand blockchain network, including projects to disrupt the creator's economy with non-fungible tokens and initiatives that can increase capital in the Algo decentralized finance ecosystem through liquidity mining, lending, borrowing, and yield farming, the company said in uh, the press release. It says here, it amazes us to see how the ecosystem has expanded since then, but we believe that this is just the beginning and there is a lot of room to keep growing, Borderless founding managing partner David Garcia said in the statement. The Miami-based firm is among the leading investors in the Algorand ecosystem. Here's some more details. In June 2019, it launched a $200 million uh, Algo Fund 1. Borderless said that it's currently focusing $400 million in investments on Algorand projects to different funds. Uh, the company said that, if, said that its Algo Fund 1 had invested in over 100 companies in over, 30, uh, over the past 30 months, including Tinyman, Yield, Yieldly.Finance, Yieldly Reach, uh, Opalus and Flare Network. Guys, I am massively bullish on Algorand and it's not because of my feelings or emotions, but when I see the amount of capital coming in and the building and the adoption with central banks and then in my interview with Sean Ford, the COO of Algorand, you know, one of the things he recently said was that uh, they're looking to... Um, make an upgrade to move to 10,000 transactions per second. I'll leave it at that. Not financial or investment advice, but I'm bullish as hell on Algorand. All right, look at this. Just in, Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs that pay monthly yields launched today in Canada. And Genster is, 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 is a Grinch. That's what he is. <laughs> uh, the rest of the world is moving forward and it's pathetic that you have the SEC and Genser uh, being roadblocks for, for what we need for this market to, to continue to grow. Now, check this out. 
and why, uh, well, I should say NIDIG. Remember what I keep saying to you guys? I'll say it for the millionth time. Keep an eye on NIDIG. I've interviewed some people close to them. They're Wall Street players, connections to Ben Lossky, lots of institutional money and power behind this. Uh, their CMO said, we're bringing Bitcoin to hundreds, if not thousands of U.S. banks in the next year. Guys, I hope you see what is happening here. If you're still on the fence about crypto, you're missing one of the greatest opportunities in the history of the world. And that is not hyperbole. Please tell me when there was a global borderless asset class that anybody could participate in where you didn't have to be an accredited investor, where you could put as little as 20 bucks into an asset, or you can put millions or billions into it, and you're, you're part of that asset class. I'll wait. Is it gold? Nope. <laughs> uh, and you remember the principle is that a greater than gold is the uh, cap supply the ability to earn, um, the, the transportable, the device, the, the, the visibility, right? All, all these things, obviously digital. So nothing has ever existed like this. And even stocks, there's only certain stocks that you can buy in certain markets, right? And obviously stocks can be split and so on and so forth. I don't think I need to go into all those details, but big things are happening. And all the banks and stock exchanges are coming. And, uh, you know, Block, BlockWorks did an interview and, and they talked about this. So I'm, I'm telling you, keep an eye on this name. Big, big things are coming. All right. Senator Cynthia Lummis, who I'll be interviewing tomorrow, in fact, if you don't want to miss this interview, uh, she tweeted the following, bullish Wyoming aiming for 5% of the U.S. Bitcoin mining hash rate by next halving. States are going to compete for Bitcoin mining. And I've interviewed some Bitcoin miners on my channel. You guys have seen that. A lot happening in Texas. Uh, obviously, the mayor of Miami wants miners to come there. Cynthia Lummis out of Wyoming. She wants miners to go there. Game theory playing out right before us. Metcalf's law playing out right before us. Uh, it's amazing what's happening. And it, uh, once again, if you guys have been subscribed to this channel, we've been talking about this for years and years, even in the bear market when a lot of people weren't around and weren't paying attention, right? But this is a disruptive technology. It's a new asset class. It's emerging. Um, there's a lot of fine tuning and, and you know, multiple iterations that need to be done to a lot of cryptos. But you know, sometimes people tend to focus on the, the, the weaknesses or the flaws, and they're missing the forest for the trees, right? Uh, and, and they don't see the pros and where this is headed. Remember, when the internet started, it was not, it was not perfect, guys. Dial up. I, I, lived, I grew up in that era where if you're on the phone, you couldn't get on the internet. You had to wait till someone hung up the phone and then it was dial up and then it took like two minutes to get online and it was slow. And there were critics back there and saying, oh, yeah, the, the internet's gonna, not going to be better than the fax machine and all kinds of stuff. But you have to look at, uh, you know, with the potential and where we're headed, not just to today and have tunnel vision of today or next week or next month. Where is this technology taking us? Same thing with the automobile, right? Good Lord, the first uh, automobile, it was trash compared to today's standards, right? It was, come on, garbage. But look at where we are at now. The first steam engine and for boats and, and trains and so forth, the first airplanes, come on, I could go on and on and on. You got to have a macro level view. And that is how a lot of these smart money and institutional investors look at markets. That's why they're betting millions and billions of dollars on these uh, different blockchains. Will everything be a winner? Will, will everything be successful? Of course not, right? You're playing the odds here. This is probabilities. But that's, this is why you want to do your facts. You want to do your research. This is why I built this channel to bring education, to bring facts. Who's investing in what? Who's building what? What moves are they making? What, what's the potential of some of these projects? Are they actually solving a problem, right? Who's behind them? Um, who, who's partnering with them? This is what you want to look at. This is how you, you have to start to think. It's not just the price. The price is important. But a lot of these movements, these, these uh, setting up of the infrastructure will, will result in higher prices and adoption. So 
Hope you guys get that. Those of you who are new to the market, hope this is helpful and uh, definitely want to hear your thoughts. Um, uh, but, you know, like I said, the big news, I think, is this grayscale letter to the SEC with this pushback. If this has some legs, whew, I can't wait, wait to see who else is going to join the party with grayscale on this. And uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.